If you need under six seconds of latency, regular old HLS might get you there, right? I've done plenty of two second chunk, three, three chunk manifest setups where you're getting around six seconds, maybe 10, it might drift to 10, depending on if uh, what kind of edge uh, origin architecture you set up, you know, getting six might be uh, uh, difficult to pull off, but you can actually get much lower than 30 second uh, latency, which is the quote unquote standard for HLS. I, I've done a lot of custom WASA setups where, you know, we're having two second chunk sizes uh, and uh, three segment manifests and that's, uh, that's plenty. Uh, the, uh, or I should say shaves enough latency off. Uh, a lot of live broadcasts don't need uh, super low latency. If you need under three seconds, well, this new low latency HLS spec that Apple's been working on uh, since uh, the end of last year, uh, uh, Roger Pantos talked about it at a stream media keynote, our last keynote that we had in person. I, uh, but uh, that, you know, you might be able to pull that off with low latency HLS. If it's under one second, if you need sub one second, sub 500 millisecond, then WebRTC is pretty much your only option, especially when you're going with the browser. So you got to work with what we've got. And again, I, I, WebRTC's come a long way. It just doesn't move as quickly as some of us in past uh, runtime uh, architectures like Flash are used to, right? Because you got to get all these stakeholders moving together, all these behemoth browsers, you know, all moving forward together, right? Um, so let's talk about latency real quick. How do you measure that glass to glass latency? Well, there's different ways to do it. Uh, sometimes you can get timestamps embedded in your WebRTC, you know, outbound, your publish ingest. You can look at it at the server and look at it on the client and do some very calculable, calculated, measurable WebRTC uh, round trip times, right? Uh, and uh, and that, that could be an option. What I usually use that's very quick and dirty is just to use a burn in time code on a test stream. It's great for testing, but you're not gonna be able to measure that in production because not everyone's gonna be streaming with burnt in time code. And I'll get, show you an example of that in just a moment. Um, counting tests, that's a, a very quick and easy way to see how good your latency is, right? So what that basically means, if, like just like if I'm in a Zoom call or any kind of video conferencing app or proof of concept, I can uh, try and do a rapid count. So I'll say one, my uh, whoever is joining a conference with me will say two, and we try to quickly follow with the next number as we count up, right? And if there's a long delay between the perception of when I say a number and when I hear it come back from the other person, then I, I get a really good sense right away of how bad that latency is, right? If, it's, if we could talk on top of each other almost, then that's fantastic. That's, that's a, again, quick and dirty. It's not as measurable as some of this other stuff that I mentioned. 